Happy New Year, dear listeners. Oh, we've been through a lot and still have a long road ahead of us. And the marking of the passage of time can bring with it all sorts of anxieties, especially so in our varying degrees of chaos and limbo of the past many months. But let's go easy on ourselves and trust that there are brighter days ahead. Well, I can say that immediately ahead of you is the final installment of our four-part series, The Ride Sharers. We pulled it from our vault of previously unreleased shows, the saga of the Schnell Ride-Sharing Company and its assorted nefarious characters, concludes in The Tunnel. It was taped live in New York City on December 16th, 2018. Miss Sevens? That's me. I didn't hear you come in. A little too good at what you do, eh? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm a few minutes early, Mr. Albans. Nothing to be sorry about, Miss Sevens. I do like your name, by the way. What can I do for you, Mr. Albans? Well, where do I begin? (sighs) From the outside, everyone thinks this trendy little company of ours is doing quite well for itself. Isn't it? We're in our death throes, Miss Sevens. I'm out of cash. Schnell has lost all its gains from the previous quarter, and we've slipped into fifth place among our competitors. Hmm, well, that's the topsy-turvy startup world for you. The press we got from that driver of ours going over the Brooklyn Bridge. It's ruined us. Not as much as it ruined him. So what can I do for you, Mr. Albans? I'm left with a nagging problem. Go on. My angel investors. They're quite cross with me at the moment. Yes? I need to... Make good with them. Make good? Yes, make good. I understand. You do? You want me to wine and dine them while looking my best. Show them the time of their lives. Yes, I'd like you to do that. But, Mr. Albans... Yes? Didn't you just say that you were out of cash? (laughs) Yes, I, I did say that, didn't I? Well, the company is out of cash. I'll be all right. Here. There's half up front. When can I expect the other half? If you succeed, and everyone is happy. You mean when I succeed? Fancy luggage, going somewhere nice. I'm flying out tonight. Running away, you mean? I'll be out of the country for a spell. You didn't answer my question, Mr. Albans. When will I receive the remainder of the fee? I'll get it to you as soon as I've received word. Just a reminder, payment is due immediately upon receipt. Our agency has offices all over the world with staff fully prepared to assist you at any time. They can even come to you if necessary. Thank you for the reminder, Miss Sevens. Of course, Mr. Albans. Please, have a seat, sir. Yes, please. All comfortable? Very good. Thanks for making the trip up here. You found it okay? (laughs) Foolish question. Of course you did. That's kind of what you do, isn't it? This is such a quaint little town, isn't it? Kind of frozen in another time, wouldn't you say? The kind they just don't make anymore. The kind they can't make anymore. Not since everything changed. You know... They couldn't replicate the architecture alone on our main street, even if they tried. But can you believe it? There are some out there who would like to see it all go away. All these people can do is cry and complain and try to force unsolicited change down our throats. They can't build anything that will last. Not like our main street. Well, we've done all we can to protect our main street from outsiders. Know what I say? Let the rest of the outside world rot in its wretched decadence for all I care. It's not getting its subhuman paws on this little haven of ours. But still, I wonder, who's going to carry on once we're gone? (laughs) We're not going anywhere. Not for a long time. Now please, Jackson, is that the end of your soliloquy? Excuse me, sir, my brother digresses more than a late-period Melville novel. (laughs) Good one! (laughs) (laughs) Let me come out with it nice and plain, sir. You're an odd duck. A very odd duck, but an effective one. I'm not quite sure how you do what you do, but yes, your efficacy is only matched by your 
eccentricity. But we like the results every time we've engaged your services. Let's get right to it. The bastard. Albans. He's going to try to make a run for it. We need you to stop him. Stop him before he can do such a thing. And we don't care how you do it. Just stop him. He failed us. He took our money and then tried to wipe his feet on our reputation. He must be stopped. Albans doesn't get to just disappear. Not that way. Not on his terms. Not the way he'd like to disappear. So stop him, won't you? Chuck, honey. Today's mail. Did it arrive? Yeah. My check came in? Yeah, hon. It sure did. You think it will be enough? I don't know. You don't think it'll be enough, do no. you? No, I, I said I don't know. Chuck. Yes, Laura. You know, and I know, I'm not going to make it. Yeah. You have to keep bringing that up, huh? Because you have to prepare yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Chuck, I don't want to leave you with a whole bunch of unnecessary expenses. Laura. I don't want to leave my husband in the poorhouse. I won't be in the poorhouse. The only job you have right now is driving for Schnell. I'll be all right. I, I, I'll, I'll find something else. Look... Let's worry about that when it... The first <sighs> bills have already started coming in. We've never made enough money in our whole lives to prepare for the tidal wave of expenses that'll be coming in after I... I... Uh, and for what? I... I don't want to talk about this right now, Laura. I'm going to work. Chuck, I want you to do something. Something before you go. What? I don't want to suffer anymore. I don't want you to suffer after me. Laura. Pick up that pillow there. Laura. Chuck, pick up that pillow, please. I want you to... to... put it over my Laura. face. Please, Chuck... Listen to me, honey. I'm begging you, please. 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 <laughs> May I ride him one more time? Only if you'll have dinner with me tonight. <laughs> Trying to sweeten the deal. Hmm? Um, <laughs> tell me, Arlene, are you or are you not going to purchase Callisto here? Oh, he's coming with me. And so is your brother. To dinner, that is. Oh, why don't you join us, Jackson? Well, who wants to be the third wheel? Bah. That's never stopped you before. I don't think Arlene has the same level of interest in me, it seems. Oh, well, I, I didn't realize that the horse and both brothers were potentially part of the offer. Not sure what you mean by that, Arlene. Jackson, my good man, it's called an innuendo. It's called dinner for three, and possibly dessert. I don't like this kind of talk. I'm sorry. Oh, stop being such a prude, Jackson. It's just us now. You can drop the act. Oh, Jackson, dear. I get the sense you've been to this rodeo before, haven't you? Would one of you gentlemen mind helping me dismount? Certainly. Careful. Oh. Just take my hand. I've got you. Oh, that's all right, Vernon, dear. I think I'm good from here. I think I'll just slide off on my... 
<laughs> you like the feel of leather around your neck? Hmm? I knew you would. Oh, look at your face, darling. <laughs> you like this, don't you? <laughs> don't worry. Oh, he likes it. Don't you? Stop! You're going to kill him! You're right! He's had enough! <laughs> hey! What are you doing with that? <laughs> ah! No! He's still tied to the. Vernon! Vernon, you. You, no. you bitch! You. <laughs> That's one kneecap. Ah. Oh! Oh, and there's the other! Ah. Are you certain you don't want to have a nice candlelit dinner with me, Jackson? Ah. Albans! That bastard Albans, he sent you... Mm, I will say this. You have quite a future as a detective. Uh, well, maybe not anymore. Oh, please. Uh, wait. Don't let the horse drag my brother around by the neck like that. Please. Please. Uh, I'll think about it. In the meantime... Driver! Driver! I'm right here. Here! Here! Damn it. Okay, buddy, I see ya. Hey there! What's your name? Name's Chuck. Hi, Chuck. What's your last name, Chuck? Georges. Nice to meet you, Chuck Georges. I'm Frederick Albans. Albans, you say? Yes, that Albans. It's, it's it's nice nice to meet you, sir. Believing using your own product, do you? Yes, indeed I do. Chuck, I need to go to Kennedy Airport. You got it. You don't mind me riding along with you, sir? Nope. Plenty of room back here. What terminal, sir? I hate that word. Terminal. Yeah, your son morose, Chuck. <clears throat> Having a bad day? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah, you want to talk about it? No. Not especially. If it's any consolation, Chuck, I'm also having a pretty rotten time. Hey, maybe you want to talk about your problem, Mr. Alban. Not especially. Enjoying your Chanel experience, sir? Sure you don't mind me coming along for the ride with you? Oh, all right with me. But I don't let anything get to me either way. Name's Billy. Billy Breeze. Billy Breeze. <laughs> what a name. Only in New York. I just love this city. It was always my dream to live here once I made it in this country. I love you New York characters. I'm gonna miss seeing all of you. You're going away? For a while, yeah. I love that jacket. So many brilliant colors. <laughs> Let me guess. You're an artist. Sure. Poetry's my main bag, though. Oh, I love poetry. Really? What do you read? Well, I just love poetry in general, as an art form. <laughs> yeah, just like jazz. People like to think they like poetry, but most of them don't. Like the idea of it more than the thing itself. But that's all right. Doesn't bother me none. Well, maybe you could recite one of your poems for me. I just have. Everything I say is a poem. Even what I just said now. Delightful. Thank you. Hey, Chuck, old buddy. I can feel your vibes back here, man. Uh, it's gonna be all right. Thanks, sir. Sir? <laughs> Call me Billy. Billy Breeze. Thanks, Billy. Hope you won't be late to the airport on my account, Mr. Albans. No, we've got plenty of time. What's your destination? Oh, I was just gonna do a little busking, read some poems for some extra change. No, I thought I'd meet it. You know, I, I'm okay. Chuck, uh, he's gonna drop me off uh, by the tunnel. Isn't that right, Chuck? Whatever you say. Chuck, what was that? Not sure, Mr. Albans. I, I, I gotta get that looked at. Oh, we can't have that, Chuck. No, no, not at all. Not good for our brand, right? Yes, Mr. Albans. I... You'll have that looked into right away, won't you? <laughs> Do you hear me? I'm a little low on funds at the moment, Mr. Albans. I... I mean, the company doesn't really help us drive. Do you know who you're talking to, Chuck? Mr. Albans. You're my wife. Oh, I don't really she... want to hear it, Chuck. I mean, what kind of impression is that going to leave on our passenger, Mr. Billy Breeze, here? Do you think he's going to refer Chanel to his bohemian brethren after hearing cracks and groans coming from beneath our vehicles? Yeah, it doesn't bother me. Not one bit. But then again, nothing really does. Well, it's my car, Mr. Albans. It's not while you're driving for me, it isn't. I just roll, roll, roll with it, baby. We'll make it up to you, Mr. Breeze. I'll make sure you get a voucher for some free rides. 
Maybe Chuck here will be able to make it up to you personally. Whatever you guys want to do. Hey, you see here in uh, today's paper? <sighs> what a drag. Why do I read these things anyway? Another suicide, another suicide, and over what? Man can't drive a cab anymore and make a living. That's terrible. Some people might want to blame people like you and Chuck here. No, not me. It's sad, yeah, yeah, it's sad, all right. But change is inevitable, baby. Gotta let it roll, roll, roll. Ugh, I can't take that sound. Ah, no use crying over it. You may not like it, but change is gonna be change. Change has to be what it is. Change has no boss. It just takes us over and turns us inside out, and atoms are shuffled and recombined, and before you know it... Oh, wait, here's my stop. It's been super-duper riding with you, gents. Here, here's a little tin whistle for you. Oh, sorry, I'm a little out of practice, it seems. Good night, Mr. Breeze. Huh. Sounds like a lot of cop cars. Why do I feel like they're heading this way? Hey, one of you guys in trouble or something? The police? Of course we're not in any sort of trouble. Remember that little story about the headless horseman? You know, what do they tell Ichabod Crane? What do they tell him to do in order to find safety from the demon's fiery wrath? That's right, to go to the covered bridge. That tunnel right there. I'd head into that if I were you. That's your covered bridge, I bet you. What's going on here? See you later, Chuck. Mr. Albans, go on ahead. Embrace the change. It's all you can do anyway. And, oh, yeah, Vernon and Jackson send you their regards, Mr. Albans. Good evening and good luck. Vernon and Jackson. Oh, my God. Chuck, what are you doing? I'm going into that tunnel. What? They must know. I can't let them get me. Chuck, what the hell is going on here? I shouldn't have done it. Chuck. I can lose them. Stop. Stop. Immediately. I I can lose them. Good hustle, Bob. We got him blocked in real good on this side of the tunnel. Well, you called me just in time. He won't even try to get past all of us unless he's a total nut job. You think he's armed? Yeah, I sure hope not. They should be coming out any second. Wait, it's an Escalade, you said? Yeah. All right, here he comes. Oh my god, look at the sign in the dashboard. Another Schnell driver. Oh, what is up with these guys? Listen up, both of you. You're gonna lower your windows and then you're gonna come out with your hands over your heads. You understand? Okay, let's go. Cover me. Excuse me, sir. I'm assuming you're the owner of this vehicle. Uh, I, I am? Well, you're behind the wheel, aren't you? I, I guess I am. How? What's his name? It says right here on his hack license posted here. Charles Georges. But that's not me. That picture next to the name sure looks like you. But I was in the back seat only a second ago. Honestly, I... You're not in the back seat, pal. Have you been drinking? Doing any drugs? No. No, I haven't. Look, Mr. Georges. My name isn't Georges. Let's not play any more games. When was the last time you saw your wife, Mr. Georges? My wife? You, in the back seat. You with this guy? I'm... I'm not sure what just happened. Your ID, please? Sir, said your ID, please. Thank you. Oh, guy in the back here is Frederick Albans. Can't be. I'm Frederick Albans. Got caught up in a wild ride there, huh? I, I... You can go. Hey, hey, you don't want to question him, eh? No, nah, we got the guy we're looking for. Besides, he's donated a lot of dough to our benevolent associate. Sorry, you got to go through all that, Mr. Albans. It's all over now. It's going to be all right. So again, Mr. Georges, you want to tell me? When was the last time you saw your wife?
our wandering poet and boastful busker, Billy Breeze, at the entrance of the Holland Tunnel where he set out to regale captive motorists inching their way to New Jersey with his unique versifications. Before we close, let's take a moment to see how he's doing. Roll, roll, roll. Yeah. Roll, 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 you pathetic souls. Go down in your sinkholes, back to your hell holes. You, in the Volvo, you and yours got a go-go. Hey, Range Rover, it's time to move over. And you, you think you're a star in your sleek Jaguar? And don't look so snotty in your fancy Bugatti. Hey, Mr. Chevy, your foot is too heavy. And guy in the Saab, you look like a slob. Yo, Mr. Hummer. That car is a bummer. Oh, and you in the Jeep, you look like a creep. Here comes a ram joining the big jam. But don't worry, Bentley, I'll let you down gently. So don't complain, there's no passing lane. And no turn on red is just what I said. Now go for your drive and hope you arrive safe in your abode at the end of the road. These lanes just converge as you carefully merge. It's just like a funnel as you pray for light at the end of the tunnel. Roll, roll, roll. And that was The Tunnel. The cast featured in this episode include James Kleinman as Frederick Albans, Alan LaForest as Jackson Ames, James Reeser as Vernon Ames, Mary Murphy as Laura Georges, Eric Davy Gislason as Chuck Georges, David Linton as Billy Breeze, Michael Pate as The Cop, Casey LaForest as Barb, The Traffic Cop, and the part of Ms. Sevens was played by me, Ali Silva. The song, Going My Way, written by Jimmy Van Heusen and Johnny Burke, was performed by Martina De Silva, accompanied by Brad Whiteley. The poem, Roll, 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 was written and performed by David Linton. The tunnel was written by Sylvan Zandivar and directed by Holly Payne Strange. Our live show and podcast are produced by Gustavo Rodriguez and me for Fireside Mystery Productions. Our musical score was improvised and performed by Brad Whiteley. Our sound effects designer and engineer was Greg Russ. Our technical director at the Slipper Room was Johnny Goddard. Jason Graves composed our theme music, and I manage our audio post-production. This series may be one unearthed from the vault of previously unreleased and given a good dusting and polish, but we're also in the midst of crafting brand new audio delights for you as we adjust and rejigger our production model. It is the support from listeners like you that stokes our fires and helps us to burn long and bright into the future. And being a Patreon patron is how it happens. A contribution through Patreon, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars or more per month, can provide the vital lifeblood we need to keep doing this thing we do. Hey, we know, times are tough, so you can only do what you can do. But when you become a Patreon patron, not only do we have infinite thanks for you, we also offer things like discounts on merch, personalized postcards from Sunken Harbor, a snazzy Fireside Mystery Theater enamel pin, And now, when you become a patron at $5 or more per month, in addition to access to exclusive bonus content, we are now offering new episodes ad-free in our exclusive Patreon feed. How about that? Learn all about it and become an FMT Patreon patron today. Go to patreon.com slash fireside mystery theater or just follow the link on our website. We thank you for any support you can give to help keep our fireside flickering. 
So, now you have listened. Have you subscribed yet? It's the easiest darn thing to do now, so I hope you have. You know what else is easy and goes a long way to support us? A rating and a review. Go on and spread the good word of our audio drama loving ways, friends. And do be sure to find us and give us a holler on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Fireside Mystery. Our performance stage may have gone dark for the 2020-2021 season, but that doesn't mean we aren't still doggedly driven and determined to deliver deliciously dark diversions to your socially distanced eardrums. Stay tuned for all new, yes, all new content that is being creatively crafted and suspensefully stirred at this very moment. You will not be disappointed, dear listeners. Was it a creeping sense of danger that made you run that red light? Oh, you might want to reposition that rearview mirror so you can be sure to mind the shadows. 